So, Cass has already started. I'm just sorting out some tools in the shed. We got this new toolbox and the shed is kind of coming along. Super sunny day today. So the camera is struggling a bit. Also, it's pretty crazy after all the snow that we had last week. Here's the van. Just gonna start taking all the panels out. Strip everything out. And we'll treat the floor as well. I need a toolbox. I need a spanner. Got all these screws everywhere. Oh, you got to pull it out. Yeah, well, some of them you can't just pull out. All the uh, threads. You can't just screw them out. Some of them you can. Oh, this one just comes out. All right, well, that was good. They're pretty much there. We're going to have to take these big ones out as well. It's got a few of them. Because it's trying to take this guy out. He's already so bent. Yeah. So we take these guys out, we'll take the bulkhead out. Some of them come out. It's super easy. Yeah. But they're all different screws though as well. Yeah, I guess it's what was holding down the uh, floor before. Right, go on. So, I'm trying to get these off. And they're proving much harder than what I had originally thought. So I've kind of got a flathead screwdriver and a pair of pliers. And I've been plying them out, but I don't quite know if that's the right way, but it seems to be working. It's just a bit tedious. So I've been getting the screwdriver in here and then getting my pliers in here and then just kind of pulling it, pull out. it out. But some of them are easier to come out than others. But as you can see, there are absolutely loads. Another end of the spectrum. This bulkhead is almost out, apart from these two bolts, which I haven't seen before, because most of the bulkhead removals we watched were all on crafters and sprinters. And they don't have these, as far as I'm aware. So these guys, well, not that we've seen. they don't have a, you can't just unscrew them. They're not the normal bolts, so we're gonna have to drill them, drill them out. I started doing this one, but you can see there are like metal shavings everywhere, so I want to try to avoid as much as I can. So I put this little tape here. Hopefully that will catch most of it. And now I'm gonna try to drill it out and see what happens. Guess that's off. Now we need to do the other side. There we go. So that's off. This is holding the bulkhead on the other <laughs> side. The contraption didn't work. <laughs> My contraption worked as well. Well, it did. It did catch quite a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. Look at all that metal shaving. There we go. You can see the uh, metal shavings here where I didn't catch as many. On the other side, it's done a done a pretty good job. So I would definitely recommend doing that. We're gonna sweep all this up anyway, but you don't know where those little metal shavings could end up in, and then it'll create create rust. So yeah, that's done. Cass is removing more panels i'll probably start helping her do another side and then do a bit clean right so it's now two o'clock we start at around 12. <laughs> 12. we just tried we just we just tried recording this and we had a 
the microphone was off so I'm starting again but initially I said we started at 10 and yeah we got we got we got our bed for 10 and this is as far as we got all right welcome back just had lunch I'm in a workshop gas is already working away so you see where we were up to last time we are finished taking those panels off this is struggling as usual main things we've been using is this toolbox we got from machine marts it's got loads of assorted tools um it's decent quality it was like 80 80 quid but it's pretty much everything you need or you know it's kind of handy and we can chuck loads of extra tools in at the bottom um and so far this was enough and the Bosch Bosch uh, wireless drill alright so we just finished taking out all the panels. These are all the plastic pieces that we had to take out. Super annoying. These guys are super tight. Try removing with this. You don't really get enough out of it. So what I ended up doing is I rigged this piece with this head which is what you need for them it kind of goes in there it doesn't go in very well but it's enough that you get enough torque with this to loosen it another thing is this WD-40 what you do uh, I'm sure these guys are going to be massive really painful like the other ones so what I did is I tried to squirt some in there and just around there so squirt some underneath squirt some around and just leave it squirt squirt, squirt. what I had with the other ones is even after you leave it for a couple of minutes it's still this is tidying up. Even after you. Sorry, it's, it's going everywhere. So, what I had with the other ones is even after you leave that for a couple of minutes, it still wouldn't on. I wouldn't be able to unscrew it. So, what you have to do is get a hammer, good old trusty hammer, and just give it a little bang. And I think what happens is. The rust um, releases a bit and also it lets the uh, WD-40 to try to get through and um, that seems to be working so that's what I'm doing alrighty so we managed to remove all of these guys like I said hammer WD-40 and rig up some leverage somehow on your screwdriver because uh, one of these is probably not going to be enough and now cleaning cleaning time it's already looking pretty good these are the holes once you remove those you can see it goes uh, goes goes straight through right so Finished, finished cleaning everything, bucket is still there, things are looking pretty good, we haven't gone crazy with the uh, metal sponges and stuff because we wanted to leave as much of the paint on as we could, so there's still some, we got basically the surface dirt off and now it's getting a bit dark now so we got this light and 
Some of these are the only kind of surface rust that we have, especially around the holes and stuff. So nothing major. Yeah, these are the worst bits really. Like we haven't got any around the uh, wheel arches. Yeah, so we got these metal brushes that we can try to get some of it off and then we picked up this uh, drill bit, which is a metal brush that you can attach to a drill and I'm hoping that it will be easier to uh, get these holes and we can use the brush for these. Yeah, it's come off here. Bigger bits and can you can see, see where I've then just been brushing it, it's coming off quite easy. Yeah. The primer that we bought does say that it kills, converts rust as well as primes and paints. Um, and so I'm pretty sure if we just painted on top of this, we'd be fine. But I think we might as well do it properly and get as much of the surface stuff yeah. off as we can. And brush is good for maybe bigger bits, but we should have maybe got smaller br end brushes. Yeah. But it's good, like, for doing, like, using the end. But when you do that, it kind of, it does scratch it quite a bit. And Cass is enjoying the drill bit way Yeah, more. this is well fun. So I'll we'll give you a little, little something. Yeah, that's the review. Get one of those. Yeah. You can get loads of different sizes. It we was just like picked one up for like yeah. two quid. It wasn't no, it was a little bit more than that. I think it was like eight quid. No, it wasn't. Was it not? It was three quid or something like that. Yeah. I have the box, so I'll check. But you can get sets of loads of different sizes, so I yeah, think I'm, that's, I'm, that's I'm what sure I would you recommend. Can, I'm sure you can probably pick them up from like Wix and Home Base and stuff. We were just in Machine Mart when um, Laz picked up the toolbox, so. Yeah, I highly recommend those. plan is to finish getting all the rust off the sides yeah. so we got most of it off last night on the base but where the boards were screwed into the sides there's still some little rusty holes um we took it for a test drive this morning yep that went well yeah yeah that's today's plan prime this morning let it dry laz might be getting on with the reversing camera that we've bought but we're gonna get all the finish getting the rust off and start priming yeah prime and fill the hundred holes in the floor oh yeah that's after yeah paint first yeah yeah that's about it let's go So Laz is just in the shed with the camera, Jay, the reversing camera, um, and I'm just filling, well not filling, sorry, painting all of the rusty holes that we've sanded back. I'm just painting and priming it. The hammerite paint that we've got is actually like a two-in-one or three-in-one, I think, so no need to prime or undercoat. Um, so I've just cleaned it back, dusted it all off so it's nice and sort of clean and dry. Um, no dust particles or anything. So let me just quickly show you what I've been doing sort of before and after. I'll show you the before wheel arch and then this one. These are the ones that I've just done. So I've been using like a little brush to get inside the hole and then just using a bigger one to go around it and smooth out the paint. Um, so I'm just working on the walls first, but this is what it originally looks like. So where you can see where I've gone around it with the the drill head um, to just sort of get all the dust off and give it a nice good finish. But that's how, that's where I'm at so far. So here we're just explaining what Lars opened in the boxes of the reversing camera. We'll leave everything linked below. Unfortunately, he was making too much of a racket opening the cardboard box to use the audio. So we'll leave everything linked below if you're interested. Alrighty, so I got the light out. Just two bolts, super trivial. There's a little connector on the end. 
that you have to disconnect and now I think we just need to add it to the uh, to the reversing camera okay so I think we just need to take these clips to pop them out trying to be very careful not to break them and there's your light full of bugs and stuff now we need to fit this back in there into the reversing bit question is where does the where does that light where is this wire gonna run through i guess what we could do is drill a hole through here and then it will just pass straight through I'm not sure if that's a good idea. I'm gonna look into this. <laughs> right, so after some research, I have no idea how you meant to get that wire through the inside of this. So the only logical thing I could come up with is we're gonna have to drill a hole through the middle uh, to pass the wire through. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that, but made it, made a pretty good hole. Massive pain. The only thing I could think that would make this better is a hole saw. Because of this shape, it might be pretty hard. I don't know. Probably would be a lot easier if you had a hole saw that matches the size of this guy. So yeah, that's my hole. This is where the lights go. It's not the best, but it's something. So, here goes nothing. Just need to line up these clips. Boom. Boom. And now we got a light. Whoop. Okay. So that guy's fitted after all that. And Cass is busy painting. painting. Things are going well. Here's the wire. Just comes out of there. And yeah, on to the next step, which should be more painful than the previous one. Right, so Cass is painting away. I just had a massive fail with this uh, wire. So what I'm doing is, this is the video feed. It's gonna come from the camera all the way along here. And this is super easy, you just pass it through all the way through here up there and then yeah it comes out here this black wire which you can see and then you can pass it along on the inside of this and it's super easy if you peel this away you can feed it through just uh unclip this panel and you can run your wire through here um and this is where the monitor is going to live and then you hook this up now uh, the fail part is if you notice the uh monitor plug is a female and i just ran all that through and this wire is the female end on the other side you have the male so we've just finished for lunch um lads has hooked up the wire as he probably told you um they done it the wrong way now he's done it the right way i finished painting and priming all of the floors and all of the little holes on the side so yeah next step is for Laz to hook up the the camera and the screen at the front and then i'm gonna do another coat of the paint on the really sort of dodgy bits 
yeah and then hopefully um, I'll be able to fill up the little holes in the bottom with sick effects while Laz does the camera okay so finished the second layer of the paint just been waiting for that to dry before we start to sick effects I've been in the garden which is probably why there's bits of tree and twig in my hair I haven't looked at myself in the mirror so um, Laz is on to mission I don't know hook something up to something or other finds the electrical hookup yeah mission reverse and camera and I'm going to start the Sigaflex and that's a wrap for this weekend's vlog thanks so much for watching stay tuned for next week's vlog where we finish tackling the reversing camera after Laz's hoo-ha about that um, and we start to lay the floor which is super exciting seeing the van come together for the very first time so stay tuned for that and thanks again for watching